Membrane transport, diffusion, and osmosis is one of the concepts that has got, actually it's got two labs in AP151. Uh, so hopefully most of this is just a reminder for you, but I like to put my own spin on things. So let's go over membrane transport. <clears throat> First of all, you've learned that the cell membrane, actually, let's go here. That the cell membrane is selectively permeable. This cell membrane, this sort of dome around the factory on Mars, I think I usually analogize it as, it is responsible for controlling what goes into the cell and what comes out of the cell. Um, this is the boundary. There are some things that are allowed to go right across, just like air going through the screens on your window, right? But other things are not allowed to go across. Um, things like uh, things that are large, for example, like, like flies can't come through your screen. Um, so in some ways, the cell membrane <clears throat> is like a window screen, but it's more sophisticated than a window screen because this phospholus phospholipid bilayer that we were talking about is selectively permeable in a very clever way. And the cell membrane is made out of more than just phospholipids. It also has proteins in it. So um, the cell membrane is responsible for controlling what goes in and what comes out. Now, getting things in and out can be powered or controlled or driven by passive mechanisms or active mechanisms. <clears throat> For passive mechanisms, the cell doesn't have to use its own energy in order to, to make things happen. But in active mechanisms, the cell does have to pay to have things happen. I often think of the passive mechanisms as sort of being like gravity. With gravity, it would be easy for me to get water from a lake up the hill down to my city. I would just have to put pipes in the lake and gravity would do the work, right? But if I had a lake at the bottom of a hill and my city was at the top of the hill, well, then I would have to pay. I would have to fill up trucks and drive the trucks up the hill, or I'd have to attach a pump and I'd have to use energy to power the pump, right? So the passive mechanisms use physics forces like gravity to move things into or out of the cell. And with active mechanisms, the cell has to make things happen. The cell will use passive mechanisms as much as it can. Right? Now, the passive mechanisms that power the movement of substances across the cell membrane are diffusion, facilitated diffusion, osmosis, and filtration. I'm not going to be talking with you about filtration, although it is important when we get to the kidneys. Ooh. Also, when we get to uh, blood vessels, so make sure you've learned that in lab. Um, but we will talk quickly about diffusion and a little more about facilitated diffusion and a lot about osmosis. <clears throat> when we get to the active mechanisms, I won't be talking very much about endocytosis and exocytosis because from the point of view of the physiology that we're learning in lab, active transport is the most important uh, active mechanism, right? So we're gonna focus mostly on facilitated diffusion, osmosis, and active transport. Selective permeability. The phospholipid bilayer by itself is a selectively permeable membrane. Now, another word that is often used in textbooks for selectively permeable is semi-permeable, okay? So if you see selectively permeable or semi-permeable, then uh, same diff. Right In uh, your lab uh, manual, I think sometimes the questions will say, this membrane is permeable to blah, 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 but is not permeable to such and so. Right? If, if there's ever a question where in the question it says something can go across and something cannot go across, you got yourself a selectively permeable membrane. That's really important because the selective permeable, selectively permeable membrane is um, required if you're going to get the process of osmosis. We haven't gotten there yet though, so let's just move on here. There are some things that are allowed to go across 
the human cell membrane. Just directly walk across it like it ain't even there. Uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide, the air that we inhale has got lots of oxygen in it. And we want to give that to the mitochondria of our cells so that they can make um, ATP for us. Uh, that is allowed to just go right across our cell membranes uh, by the process of diffusion. And carbon dioxide is allowed to just leave our cells and again, go right across cell membranes. Strangely, you will learn soon, because we're gonna do uh, the endocrine system soon, that there are some pretty, pretty big mo molecules that are nonpolar like steroid hormones. Uh, steroid hormones include testosterone and estrogen, and they're allowed to go right across the cell membrane, just almost like, almost like it's not even there. On the other hand, there are some really small things like hydrogen ions and potassium ions and chloride ions. These are single atoms, and they can't go across the cell membrane. It's not because they're too big. It's because the living cell membrane is much more sophisticated than the membranes that are used in our labs. The living cell membrane will exclude very small things if they are ions or if they are polar molecules, polar molecules, right? So selectively permeable membrane. Simple diffusion is the easiest thing. So I'm not gonna spend much time on it. I'm pretty sure you understand it. All of the atoms and molecules on earth, they act kind of like hyperactive little birds. If I crowded a bunch of little blue hummingbirds in this cage and little red hummingbirds in this cage, they would only stay in their cages as long as they had to, as long as they were unable to cross whatever the membrane is. But if a membrane is permeable or if there's no membrane at all, then these little hyperactive birds that are our atoms, they're, they will fly from where they are concentrated to where they are less concentrated. So the little red birds will fly from this side of the room to that side of the room. Little blue birds will fly from this side of the room and they'll just all be mixed up. All right, that is diffusion. For diffusion, you don't even have to have a membrane, right? If I spray some perfume here, well, you wouldn't smell it because it's perfume and this is a video, okay? But if I sprayed perfume, it would just diffuse throughout the room, even though there ain't no membrane, right? So you will get simple diffusion whenever there is no membrane and molecules just like to move from where they're crowded to where they are less crowded. By the way, they're not moving from the crowded side of the membrane to a less crowded side of a membrane. They're moving from the side of the membrane where they are more crowded to where they are less crowded. And this is powered by the physics principle of entropy. Right. So passive transport. By the way, oxygen and carbon dioxide, this is how they're moving all the time. The reason oxygen goes into your blood is because there's more oxygen in the little air sacs of your lungs than there is in the blood that just came back from the rest of your body. So oxygen goes, oh, I'm crowded in the air sacs. Oh, there's not much of me in the blood, goes into the blood, right? And then the reason that oxygen is going to leave the blood when it gets down to your muscle cells is because at that moment in time, the level of oxygen in the blood is more than the level of oxygen inside of your muscle cells. So oxygen just goes, just by diffusion, okay? So let's answer a question. Go ahead, pause the video, read it, because I'm about to tell you the answer, which is diffusion does not require a semi-permeable membrane. It does not use energy. So all the above are not true. The only one that is true is it is very important in human physiology. Why? It moves oxygen and CO2 for one, okay? All right, next question, diffusion. Again, pause the video because I'm about to tell you the answer. It moves molecules from areas of higher concentration to areas of lower concentration. Does it do the opposite? No. Does it need cellular energy? No, okay? So the right answer is, it moves molecules from areas of higher concentration to lower concentration, right? Now, there are 
you know, most of things in the planet <laughs> are not allowed to go straight across the phospholipid bilayer. And yet there are many things, things like glucose, your cell badly wants glucose to go in. Oxygen, oxygen just walked on in. And so oxygen went right to your mitochondria. But if your mitochondria are going to be able to make ATP for you, we have to feed them glucose. So your cell does want glucose to enter the cell membrane. I mean, to cross the cell membrane. On top of that, at any given moment, there is more glucose in the bloodstream than there is inside of your cells. So glucose would diffuse in, but it can't get across the cell membrane. How does the cell solve that problem? It solves that problems with these proteins that are in the cell membrane. Proteins are in the cell membrane for lots of reasons. We're about to do the endocrine system, so we will learn that they are receptor molecules. But in the case of glucose, uh, proteins in the cell membrane will act as personal doors that will allow glucose to walk through the cell membrane. Now, this is the principle of facilitated diffusion. Okay, let's start with why is it diffusion? It's diffusion because the molecules that are going to move, in this case, glucose, glucose, wait, <laughs> and the molecules that are moved are still being moved by the power of diffusion, which is going from an area of higher concentration to an area where they are less concentrated, right? And because it's diffusion, it does not require cellular energy, it is passive. It is called facilitated diffusion because in the case of glucose and, and molecules like this, the uh, molecule is not allowed to go through the cell membrane. So if it's going to move, be moved by the force of diffusion, it needs a little door. So in the case of glucose, there are special proteins called glucose transporters. We will learn about them when we learn about diabetes, as a matter of fact. And so glucose is like, oh, I'm so crowded here. I wish I could get in there. And it goes into this special transport protein. And the transport protein says, all right. And it will allow the cell, the, I'm sorry, it'll allow glucose to move into the cell. Now, frankly, this little transport protein, it doesn't care which way glucose moves. If you had too much glucose inside of here, the same channel would let glucose leave right? It is a facilitated diffusion protein. It doesn't carry, care which way the glucose moves. It'll just let it move down its concentration gradient from where it's more concentrated to where it's less concentrated. Facilitated diffusion. Now, the next video, we're going to talk about osmosis. So we will pick it up there.